Welcome to Business Garage. If you are just joining us, you're right on time for the business feature. Every single week, we bring you stories of kingdom businesses here in Uganda, people like you who are doing incredible things out there and who are happy to share their journey with you. So right now, if you didn't share the link yet, share it, wake your friend up. It doesn't matter if they are running a business yet or not. We are part of the economic engine of this great nation that God has made us a part of. And we want you to be a part of it. And we are here today to share with you a story from Excel Soccer Academy. Help me welcome Coach Patrick. Yeah. I think this is the very first sports feature that we've had. And so this is really exciting. Welcome, Coach Patrick. My pleasure. Thank you Thank so you much for me. being here. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm equally excited, you're, actually. Yeah, you're equally excited. Yeah, because like so many times, like we, when we sit over the, other, over the other side, yeah, and we look at you guys, now I look at myself. Now they are looking there. at you. <laughs> <laughs> and they are very excited. Yes, On the yeah. other side, our online audience, remember, you can, you can have conversation with us throughout the interview and ask lots of good questions because we have someone here who's going to share a story so ask us don't ask questions like are you married that's not really helpful for <laughs> business garage ask the questions that are going to help you learn more about you know how to grow in your economic knowledge and strength so coach patrick tell us a little bit about your journey with excel soccer academy where when did this begin why when like, the, what's the story behind Excel Soccer Academy? Um, uh, B3, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Um, I love Worship Harvest. Melinda introduced me to Worship Harvest, but when I came over, I met so many other friends. Um, also, I met parents whose kids that I work with. Excel Soccer Academy, um, actually, it's a sports management company and the academy is just part of the, the management company um, within the management company we do of course we have the soccer program which is excel soccer academy but then some of the players that we work with when they grow up would manage them so we have the management side of things um, then we do things like football tours uh, we realize that there's parents who have money and they would wish their kids to to also go and watch Manchester play and all these other things, um, or just engage uh, these foreign clubs, you know. Some of these kids are very attached to the Manchester United and the Real Madrid and all these other clubs. So it's up to us to put programs in place whereby they can go and just get closer to the experience, you know. Um, two years ago, we were in Madrid, and um, we, we met the players, we, we trained at the facility where the, the Ronaldos are training. So that exposure brings closer brings the kids closer to what the real thing is all about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Parents out there who would like their kids to have a closer experience to the experience. Yeah, we have, we have the services available. So there's no, there's no story of you don't know how to do it. So now, so I guess what I want to also hear a little bit about why the soccer academy for you, Tony, because I called you Tony, Patrick. Have you not have always called you t Tony, even at Worship of Katikati? Maybe the Lord, is there a no, middle name you're hiding? I, I, I get called so many other things. Uncle Coach, Coach Patrick. <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> Uncle Coach. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so t tell us a little, why, wh what, what is it about soccer and sports? And because I found out, and, and maybe if you can tell us a little bit about how you actually have studied this stuff, yes. where did the love for and the and the desire to even lead you into ha ending up having an enterprise that is around uh, a soccer and sports come from where did this dream begin i i come from the from a generation where our parents used to take sport as a um abm is a new you know there's mm. that despisation but um i was lucky enough that when i was younger i moved away from here <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, um, and where I was staying by then, I spent so many years. And um, through my lifetime of um, studying, uh, at first I played a bit. Um, maybe I wasn't good enough to make the grade to be the Ronaldos and, uh, and the Roonies of this world. But at, at the back of my mind, I had the passion. And I've always thought that um, at a certain point in my life, I'll go back home and give back to the community. 
and to the young people back home. So I prepared myself. So um, when my friends and all these other people that I knew were studying computers and, and trying to be doctors and engineers, which is, which is very good, mm -hmm. I knew where my, 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 push, my, my passion led me to, and that was into the field of sport. So I had experiences working in the US on like soccer camps, um, that kind of thing, and that drove me into studying. So I, I started a diploma in sports development. That's um, the other side of understanding an athlete and, and you know, the, psychological, uh, the psychological side of things. Um, so I did um, um, a diploma in sports development. Um, then I went into a sports science uh, where you measure. You can measure into things like sports science with coaching, sports science with nutrition, sports science with designing. Uh, I've got guys working great jobs, doing great jobs with like Adidas and all these nice boots that the, uh, the Messi's and all these guys wear and they're earning lots of money. Um, so yeah, I, I knew where my, my lead would be, and uh, so I decided to equip myself uh, with the education and the, the knowledge that I need for me to come back home and do what I'm doing right now. Wow. Yeah, that sounds a little bit like the gentleman of last week, where you know from an earlier age that the thing that you want to pursue is around, you know, sports for you. And, and you went ahead and studied it and equipped yourself and came. So you come back to Uganda after many years. Many years, yes. <laughs> More than 20 years away. Yes. And you come back into a, a world where, yes, soccer is great, but me, I mean, it's not the UK where it's like a real... Yes. It's like a, a, it's like a religion, you know? Absolutely. And so tell us a little bit about your journey here, the beginnings. How was that for you having to start... Uh, the, the, it wasn't the first year, but having to start the Soccer Academy in 2011, that's nine years ago. Mm -hmm. What has the journey been like? I came back to, um, I, I kind of like engaged my, my family, close family, mm -hmm. my aunties and all these other things. But of course I knew um, who my, I don't want to say competitors, but uh, I knew people who are doing the same thing that I wanted to do. Yeah, they were your competitors. That's <laughs> yes. all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about the Edgar, uh, the Edgar Youth Program and ProLine and yes, all these other guys. Yes, yes. Um, so, um, of course, I wanted to do the same thing as they were doing, yeah. but I just wanted to advance it a bit. Uh, so, for instance, um, um, I knew that they were doing trips, mm -hmm. but um, um, they were going to what I would term as lesser countries. Yeah. You talk about the Denmarks and uh, Sweden. I, I decided to hit major cities, you know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, less, lesser in terms of soccer, you guys relax. <laughs> I was uh, I was ad advertising trips to Barcelona and Madrid and hey. Milan, and you know. So, like, parents stood up and said, "Oh, so my child can actually go to Barcelona," you know. Yeah. So, so it's that kind of thing. So 2011, we come back, I come back here and I, and I started. And I knew where I, I, want, I, 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 I had to find out where my products are or where my customers are. Uh, and those were schools. So I started tendering for contracts in schools. Because if I go to a school, say Green Hill, where, which is one of my, our biggest contracts, I knew that it is the same kids that will come on our Saturday program. Uh, that is why you find that just before COVID uh, came into place, on a good Saturday, uh, I will command like 200 kids at one of our centers. 200? 200 kids. Uh, that is a challenge. That's on the weekend, plan. right? On the weekend. And we, we, we're running three centers at the same time. So you're talking about 200 kids at Chadondo, 150 kids in Buwate, and our other center in Moa. So I went to where the, the kids were so that I come, they, they come into the program and, and set us off. Wow. But did you start with all those kids from the beginning? Not at all. Um, I was actually talking to one of, my, uh, one of the guys who work with, like, we very first started with. Yeah. Uh, I remember us when we had like two or three kids. <laughs> and, um, I, but I told them that, you see, you need to keep smiling, you see, because from the two kids, we have three kids. Mm -hmm. And then we shall have four kids. Yeah. Just keep smiling. Don't mind. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's, it's me who is paying you guys. So all I'm asking for is just keep just, smiling. Just keep smiling. <laughs> and um, and uh, just before, like, like as I said, um, 
just before COVID came in, this time around, we're just even asking parents to please drop off this because the parking was too small. Wow. You know, so it came from being this small to blowing it up and being Wow. Big. So process and just that patience and a great attitude. Smiling. smiling. People keep smiling. Please keep, keep smiling. Yeah, keep the attitude great. <laughs> yes. But what do you think led to, what, what are some of the things you've watched and seen lead to the growth the surge because you coming from four kids you told me that right now in the entire program across the board you have about how many kids about 4000 plus yes mm. yeah yes. about 4000 plus kids in the across the across the country uganda mm. and i know and you're still in the city you in cities we're still in the city right we we're, we're trying to engage um, uh, various sponsors to for us to push out because b3 uh, there's so much talent out there sports brings hope you find a young boy in Kamocha where we've picked up a few kids um, and we, we've given them hope. Yes. You know, the, I have a story of the young man. Right about now, he's on a verge of joining a club in Belgium. But yes, but this is a, this is a young man who we picked up when he was so young from Kamocha, uh, as dirty as he was. In the slums. Rough, in the slums. Mm. And this is a guy who has traveled with us to South Africa, uh, Madrid, and he's been all over the place. So sport brings hope. And then the, the, the business side to that yes. is the fact that when he goes to Belgium, Excel is going to be You paid. make some money. Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and good money. Good money. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Coach Patrick, for the longest time that I knew you at Worship Harvest Katikati, I actually thought you run a charity. Right. Because every time I encountered you, you were always talking about kids you want to help, the kids in the slums. So I thought it was this program for children from the slums uh, who you're helping to one day become something. I only found out this week when I found out that, you, that I was going to interview you that it's actually, even at downtown, we've had some of the street kids come to your program. You've met with them. You've taken, well, I remember when I think some people from Manchester United came, you made sure those kids met those legends and took pictures and had a meal with them. And so I know that your heart is very big on, in, in that, because earlier on you were struggling when I was asking you and saying, you know, how is the business? And you're like, I struggle calling it a business, you know? Yeah. Yes, it makes you money, but for you, you feel that it's a, you said it's a service. And, and, I, and that's true. That's, that's, it's a service, but it should put some money in the pocket. Absolutely. But tell us more about this passion and the dream that you have concerning bringing hope to the less privileged. Because you start these kids out at the age of four, five, Absolutely. which is really young. So how do you do that? How do you pick these kids? How do you identify them? What, what's the process like and why is that important for you? Um, that's a very important, that's a very good question. B3. Um, there's so much talent in Uganda. Our role or our job rotates around finding that X factor. Yeah. And that X factor is not in, in, in Kololo or in, you know, those posh, posh areas. That X factor is down there. So I have a team that I work with. Um, part, like, like as I mentioned to you, part of what we do is we go away on football tours. And like as I mentioned before, um, the group uh, Excel as Excel has over 4,000 kids. When we used to go away uh, on various trips, and by the way, we've done quite a few. Uh, we've done like 15 trips uh, to, to major football clubs. Um, I realized that we're going away with um, 50, 60, 70 kids. Like in Madrid, we had 70 kids and 18 parents who travel with us. Who can afford? You understand? So now, uh, being, <laughs> yes, um, it's very expensive, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, yes. So what, uh, <laughs> what I did is I, I re I'm reversing the trend. Mm -hmm. When I was in Manchester, I told the Manchester guys, if I can bring 80 kids here, how about if we if we, die, uh, if, uh, if we change the trend and you guys come to Uganda. Yeah. Because not everybody in Uganda can travel, yes. you know? There, there's all sorts of um, difficulties, you know? Um, some of those kids don't even have huh. anything that, um, like a birth certificate or, you, you just guess, oh, this one here, it may be around mm, eight. The season of May's harvest. 
I remember I went to, uh, there was a young boy that I picked up, very talented. I went to visit the mom, uh, just to get some little bit of documentation. Mm. Uh, and, and then the mom was like, hey, who's the one you, you, uh, you know, um, eight, uh, eh, na, eh, 2001, <laughs> the, the mom did not. So what I'm trying to say wow. is, <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I've, I've engaged our external contacts and told them about what is happening in Uganda. And um, so we, we've turned the trend. So now where we used to be traveling uh, with 60, 70 kids, like as I said, now the coaches come to Uganda. Wow. Yes, that is uh, the program you saw when we had the Manchester United coaches yes. here. And we had like 800 kids who turned up for the, oh. for the camp. Um, I was speaking to Manchester City the other day. They are going to come here. Yeah, even me, I was speaking to Manchester City the other day, y'all. <laughs> yeah, my friend. <laughs> yeah, your, your gift makes room for you. <laughs> So, again, I want to hear why that is important to you, engaging the less privileged. Why is that something that is close to your heart? Like as I said, sport gives us hope. Mm. We've had so many stories of so many um, prominent athletes that have come from the slums. Uh, Patty mm. has just joined Arsenal. When you read his story, this is a guy who played, um, who was picked up um, in, you know, um, some scouts came and picked, up, picked him up in Ghana, somewhere in the slums. When you read, when you read um, um, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name because I don't, live, I don't support Liverpool. But, um, <laughs> Shots fired! <laughs> Sunny, yeah, when you read his story. So what I'm trying to say is that it is that hope, it is that finding the X factor that drives me to, to go out there and find that young boy and use my contacts mm -hmm. and my capacity mm -hmm. as a coach yeah, to make him the next big thing that there is. And trust me, I, I said uh, something on, 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 on TV the other day that every single player that you see in the premiership, you know all these players that you see in the premiership, B3, we have them here. Oh, it's wow. a matter of finding them, nurturing them, and just pushing them on. Wow. The you, you really believe in this. What are some of the challenges that you have faced on that journey? Because eventually we're going to talk about the numbers in terms of business and how much you've grown, but what are some of, it's been nine years which we want to commend you for because most of the businesses that begin in Uganda do not survive to their first birthday and let alone 10th. And you're so close to number 10. So we really celebrate you that you are at nine years now and going Thank strong. Thank you. There's something, definitely there's something that you know. And I, I, I know that also you're someone who loves to learn from others. Earlier on, you were telling me about a business garage specifically where you said there's somebody, I won't mention his name, who you said, you know, you watched and watched it again because you said that that person knows something. They've been in business for so long and I have to listen. You know, you said, in fact, you have to listen because they know something. So we also have to listen because you know something. It's been nine <laughs> years, man, yes. and you're still going. So um, first paint a picture before you tell us about the challenges. How many coaches do you have on board? What's your turnover like annually? You know, what does it look like for you in terms of how are you growing? We know you have about 4,000 kids in the program, but in terms of coaches um, and, 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 and numbers in terms of finance, because you started with a dream and a few friends and a few kids, where are you now and what, did, what does it look like? Um, I should first mention that um, the gentleman that you're talking about inspires me a lot. But there's quite a few people actually in Worship Harvest uh, that inspire me, and one of them is Jeremy there. Uh, he doesn't know that. And I'm, I'm not just mentioning, yes, I, I've read the book. Uh, when, I used to, um, uh, when I used to sit down in Katikati, I, I used to like his application, you know? I would want to be so, like someone like that. Um, but yeah, like as I said, um, in terms of coaches, we used to have what we call casual coaches. These are the ones that go out for me in schools. Like as I said, we have various schools that we work with. And then I would have coaches that work with me all the time. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say full time because this, uh, the system here doesn't allow us to operate full time. But they're working with me all the time. Mm. 
Um, so you're talking about 30 coaches all together, including the casual coaches, but then the, the ones that work with me all the time are like 15. Yeah. Uh, th those are the ones that I'm with all the time. Yes. Um, of course, COVID hit us hard. Uh -huh. uh, we had to devise ways of how do we still connect with the community? How do we still connect with the parents that we work with? Um, so we ventured into private coaching. Uh -huh. uh, of course, uh, we, we, we had things given to us like the, the thermometer guns and all, and um, we, we, have to, we just had to make sure that all SOPs are put in place. Um, so we ventured into uh, um, private coaching whereby we go into parents' homes and, um, and do some coaching. What that brings in is uh, one, brings in, it used to bring in some money for us yes. because it was COVID time, but also it kept the connection between us and the parents and the kids. And then you also look at the fitness side of things. Most of these kids, okay, they would do this online studying maybe until about midday, and then they are seated there eating food and putting on unnecessary, unnecessary weight. weight. Um, so, yes, COVID has been bad, but at the same time, it has opened up our eyes to actually do even more things that we never used to do before. Yes, like that private coaching. You, uh, you earlier on told us about how, you know, the relationship between a coach and a child. How powerful is that, you know, when, when, you, when you, in your experience, how the, beyond the, the soccer and the sports development, what are some of the things that you've noticed that the academy has contributed to the children that, that you work with? Um, B3, in my position, um, I've been everything. I've been that uncle. <laughs> I've been that, um, that uncle coach, that coach uh, who they'll call at 3 a.m. in the morning when something has gone wrong. Wow. I've, I've seen some kids who have gone away with their families and they've not adjusted in the environment they've gone to because they want to come back and be with Coach Patrick. So you get connected. And it comes down to that, you know? Um, like as I told you before, um, when you bring a young person to me, uh, not, uh, I'm not only a coach to that young person, but then I develop a relationship. And it is that the relation that grows and we grow together. Like I was telling you, in a young man's life, there's three most important people, the young man himself, the coach, and the parent, okay? <laughs> depending, on, depending on how old they are, uh, you may take out the young person, but then you remain with the other coach and the parent. And between the two, you can make life a far much better for the young person growing up to be whatever they want to be. Uh, like I told you before, uh, in everything that we do, we need to manage expectations, you know? Um, because I get parents bringing kids to Milaga, this is the next messy. Oh, <laughs> sounds like some parents I know here. Yes. Greetings to Angela Okulo. <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, uh, well, there's, there's what you call tough love, yeah. and you need to mention the right things, because you need, you need, to, you need to strike a balance in, in saying what the right things, not only to the child, but to the parent. Because sometimes a coach might overexcite the parent, thinking, oh, you know, messy. messy. But um, yeah, like as I said, I've got kids um, who have told their parents, ah, ah mommy, uh, me, I'm the next Rashford. I don't even need to be doing the studying. But um, yes, so we need to manage expectations. Um, and it is our role as coaches to, to make the kids understand, as well as the parents, that listen, yes, there is that lifestyle, but you also have to do ABCD to get there. And yes. if in case you don't get there, you can also do A, B, C, D in the field of sport. Wow. Mm. So you give them options, not only sort of just about sport, you're teaching them discipline, hard work, you know, focus. Oh, yeah. At Excel, when you come through the gates to uh, play with us, we, we've, we've got most of the top people's kids over there. But like as I said, when you come through to us, um, all that is not most so, so important to us. Yeah. You've come to play. Okay, and you've come to play with the kids that we've designed to look like everything is fine uh, for them to gel in. They okay. all dress the same. They all dress the same. Yeah, that is very important. Mm. Appearance is very important because of appearance, then other things set in. You know, today we have sponsorships with Stan Big Bank, uh, Mega Milk, Lato Milk. Uh, we're talking to Prudential. 
it's because they see value in what we do, you know, um, and it comes down to appearance, the way they look. When you come to our place, you see that the kids are all numbered. Uh, normally, we number them with their age so that we know that someone already six is probably six years old and so on and so forth. So appearance is very important to the other aspect of the business side of things whereby yes. it brings in money. Wow. So Excel has excellence. Yeah, Absolutely. has excellence in it, all the detail. Yes. So let's talk business, let's talk numbers. Is the academy a profitable venture? Oh yeah, B3, it is. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, it is, uh, but you need to be careful how you do things. Um, like I said, um, just before COVID came in, we had trips to Abu Dhabi, and, and then September was supposed to be in LA. A parent, a parent paying for a child going to LA would have cost them about 4,500 US dollars. And um, we, we never struggled with numbers, B3. For us, once we put out a trip and the details, um, actually, I, I sometimes tell parents, you know what, depending on where we're going. It's uh, full. It's full. Um, so, in terms of making money, there's a lot of money that can be made, but the bottom line is that you don't have to, to make it the priority. The priority is the fact that somebody is trusting you with, the, with, the, with their child, and, um, uh, you know, and you take time to, to understand this child and, and work with that child you know, to make him a better person. Wow. What I'm hearing is that when you deliver value, the money will come to you. The money will come. But you're not, it's not about just going to make money. It's not about the numbers only. It's what value are you delivering? What change are you yes, making? But, but that's, um, I, I, I've just told you about the travel side of things. Um, like as I said, we run programs in various schools. Um, parents subscribe to our programs in those schools. Um, at Green Hill, we, we charge around 100000 per term for a child to be part of our program. And we have like 400 kids assigned to our program. Um, take that to Budo Junior, take that to Kaboja, to Kampala Quality. So in terms of making money, the money is there, but... The priority. The priority is you need to be able to relate and love these kids so that a child will disturb, mommy, take me for soccer, take mm. me for soccer, because they knows that Coach Patrick is there. Wow. Yeah, because if you don't do that, then you will lose the clients anyway, Absolutely, along yes. with the money. Yes. So the, the priority is the child and is developing them and, and growing them. Um, I, get, I think I, want, I wanted to see if there was any question. You're interested in the coach's contact? Yeah, even us, just you have to go beyond there. Uh, can we have some questions? Uh, if there's a question out there, otherwise, I'm going to ask one more question, and and then we're going to welcome Pastor Chris Kawesa as he helps take this to the next level. I think the quest, the other question on my mind is where do you see Excel? What does the future look like for Excel um, Soccer Academy? Yes, um, the biggest problem that we have right now are facilities, B3. Uh, over the years, we are lucky that we have acquired land somewhere in Gayaza, where we're going to put up a fully-fledged sports complex. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, we hope to have transportation in place. Um, like as I said, our partners are ready to uh, give us, equip us with transportation. That will be shifting kids to Gayaza, play, and we shall, it will be a residential as well, so they can spend a weekend with us, and like, you know, you as the parents can just go away and do whatever you need to do, uh, away, uh, with the, without the kids, because they'll be in Gayaza playing football with Excel Soccer <laughs> Academy. Uh, uh, so, um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that Pastor Moses says is that uh, uh, one of the signs of maturity is when you build something. Yes. So that's why we are excited that you're going to build, and by build, I don't mean build something like it's actually build a real structure like yes. physically so the fact that you are going to build something is a sign of real growth 
and maturity for Excel Absolutely. Soccer Academy. I see the, the question here about what does it take to join the academy. We, we, we will <laughs> give you information on that. Yes. Um, but right now, I'd like us to welcome Chris Kawesa, who is the leader of Business Garage here at Worship Harvest. He's going to tighten this thing and ask some more powerful questions. And he's one of my customers. Yeah. <laughs> His kids come to my program. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor B3. Thanks a lot. Uh, Coach Patrick, I have you, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm First so of all, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's a beautiful story. My pleasure. And there's a lot behind it that uh, many haven't seen. Absolutely, yeah? yes. As you were speaking, the first thing I've, I, I've always had in, in people who come here, to, from people who come here at Business Garage is passion. Yes. Your passion was there way before you started your business. Absolutely. Out yes. there when you were out of Uganda and you mm -hmm. knew you had to come back to Uganda and do something. So for me, passion stands out as one of the key things in your business. The other thing is you've talked about sports brings hope. Absolutely, yeah? yes. Sports brings hope. And uh, I remember the verse, Jeremiah uh, 29, 11, which says, For I know the thoughts that I have, the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, yeah. to give you a future and a hope. And through your story of business, you have these little boys. Do you have girls? Yeah, it's for both okay. boys and girls. You have these little boys and girls yeah. who you're giving hope. Absolutely, yeah? yes. I was thinking you're running a church. At, yeah. at uh, Worship Harvest, we say church begins on Monday mm. and Sunday is garage time. Yeah. We're basically true. running a Sunday Please, school on Saturday. It is yeah? true. <laughs> and I've come to know that one of the most influential spaces is sports globally. You see Absolutely. when there's World Cup, when Absolutely. there's tennis, when there's rugby, the world is at a standstill. Now, I've also come into interact something called uh, sports evangelism where uh, young men, youth, um, little boys and girls are taught Christ through sports. A very powerful thing. Now, with that background, I want to hear from you. Is that something you do? Because you're talking about hope, hope, hope. Are you promising them to be messy? Are you, what are some of those things that you teach that get the people from where they are to see a future? Actually, um, Chris, that's very, 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 very good uh, question or um, submission. Like, um, recently, through COVID, I realized that there's so many young people that come to us to do sport, but they lack, or they don't know God. Okay. So, I've engaged various pastors that I know. Um, we are going to have a tournament of various Sunday schools. It's going to be called Glory to Glory. Yeah, worship office, get ready. Location pastors, Mutegeke football teams. <laughs> and yes, we shall have a tournament called Glory to Glory. And that tournament will involve various churches, like Sunday schools, where kids will participate in that tournament. But in between all that, I'll have people like Jeremy or, or, Chris. or Chris or B3, B3 to come <laughs> along and preach hey. the word to these kids wow. so that within the element of sport, because that's the reason, that the, the, that's the reason why they're there, we, sh we can have someone of substance, someone like Pastor B3 to come around and tell them about the good news. <laughs> and you can see people playing sport as well as uh, giving their lives to God. Wow, this is a real business that embodies church begins on Monday. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Coach Patrick, another thing I've come to learn now, this is off a bit about business. And I want, us, I want you to talk to business people about one specific thing, coaching. When you are speaking, you told us how parents call you at 3 a.m. <laughs> Not sports related, but to talk to their children about something, making a decision, going back to school, etc. Mm. One of the things I've come to learn recently as a business person is the power of coaching. Yeah? that we don't know, I mean, I, I played some soccer, I think I could, I, play, I, I could have played better than many people I watch playing on TV. <laughs> let, let's, I had, let, let, let's not go there. I know you always <laughs> tell me how, uh, how not good I am. Yes. But yes. <laughs> there is an aspect of having a talent, mm. but you don't have a coach. Right. Yeah? 
and I've come to learn that coaching is one of the most powerful things any business should have. Yeah? Tell us about your journey. As in, if you're telling any business people out there, mm. you can have a skill, you can have the talent, it is, but the power of coaching and from a sports angle. Mm. Yes. Uh, Chris, coaching comes within. You need to have the desire to, to express yourself to any person that you're, you're either teaching or you're trying to get to learn what you're teaching them. You understand? So that's the coaching side. So it comes within. My passion is to work with kids. So my liking of kids brings out the best of me when I'm working with these kids. And like as I said, I'd rather have a four-year-old than a 15-year-old. Because a 15-year-old has got so many other things around his mind and you know, but with a four-year-old, I'll mold them into what I want. By the time he's seven, eh, or coming up to ten, um, I know him and he knows me. Do you understand? And it is that information I can even advise the parents. So, my, my skills and my way of relating to these kids brings them closer to me. And you find that sometimes they open up to us. And when they open up to us, then we can advise parents on the best way to you know, uh, relate with their own children. So, that aspect of being closer eh, and something coming within eh, is the best skill and that brings satisfaction to me. Yes. And of course, the, the child must be willing to be coached as well. The child is a child. Mm. In most cases, a child cannot dictate to me. Many, many, like, they, they wouldn't tell me how to go about things. It is about me to make them understand me as a person, as an individual. And like as I said, that bond that you create brings the child closer to you, they open up to you. And then that way, you can, you can advise and inspire and do so many other kids, so, so many other things with that child. Uh, and then with that, then you work with, the, with their parents in order to make them the child that their parents want them to be. Wow. So as business people, we can tend to be children sometimes. Uh, there is one of the greatest coaches ever. Let me put this to you. Maybe you'll think about it as a future career. One of the greatest business coaches ever. Uh, he coached Steve Jobs, coached uh, the Google guys. He's coached many guys in Silicon Valley. He was a football coach, American football coach. He's called Bill Campbell. So the, the things that you have in, as you're coaching people, uh, you can also coach adults. <laughs> <laughs> now, finally, my, my, what I've learned from you really is the power of environments. You travel a lot. I've seen you going to sports uh, conferences. Yes. You take children out to have this experience. Yes. And one of the growth uh, tools that we, we, we have come to learn is going to environments which challenge you. Now you've gone to Madrid. You've gone to, I'm not surprised you want to build a, 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 an academy. But tell us out there, what has that hap changed in your life as a business person? but also in the ch children's lives. That exposure, traveling and going to Madrid, to Barcelona, to Manchester United, to Abu Dhabi, wherever it is. Okay, just from, as a from, tool to from, expand your... From, from the business perspective, Chris, and I would like to say this, you need to be able, you need to have the capacity to invest in yourself. Last year in September, I attended a conference, a soccer ex conference in Portugal, and I invested money in myself, okay? It was quite expensive for me to attend that conference, but I, sit, I, I sat down with people like Deco, uh, sports directors from Ajax, Borussia Dortmund, people who understand and people who are looking for me. But if I'm in a country like Uganda, a director of football at Ajax may not even ever know where Uganda is, but I invested money in myself. I went to this conference. I was seated in the same room as the people I've always admired to meet. Do you understand? So, going back to the business side of things, and, um, and by the way, um, at the same conference, I met a lady who is an agent who is interested in being an agent to, uh, to, to girls who are interested in playing football. So now, coming back to ourselves, well, as per now, we have two girls going away for trials at Celtic through that contact. Now, had I stayed in Uganda and not invested money in myself to go to Portugal, I would never have met Kylie. So, what I'm trying to say is, people should be ready to invest in themselves. Um, listening to the, the beauty lady who, who sat here before, um, she invested in herself. You know, she took time 
to, to invest in herself. And she is where she is right now because she invested in herself. So my advice to so many people out there that, listen, please invest money in yourself. Because when you invest money, then other attributes will come towards you. Wow. Business people, invest money, travel, go get those experiences that will push your mindset above where it should be, where it is. There's a question here. Tell us a little more of your personal story. Did you play and where? <laughs> because you might be here thinking there's nothing in these legs. About Chris, you know. You know, yeah. you know that. well, um, you see, uh -huh. <laughs> you see, I've, I've had many people who like, they, they, they ask them, why did you play football? I got injured and, and, and all those excuses. But when it comes to my, I played a bit. Uh, I went to a school called Hachamud. Um, Hachamud, um, my, one of my OBs was Ian Wright, okay, the Arsenal legend. Um, Ian Wright represented that school at district level, okay, and I was the next person to represent that school at district level after Ian Wright, wow. okay. But um, uh, my life took a little bit of a, of a curve when, um, to be honest with you, I lost my mom, who was like my everything, and everything just turned, um, just turned around, you know. Uh, I never had that person to push me, um, uh, you know. So um, uh, in terms of talent, I was maybe good enough to have played football, but uh, I lost someone at a very crucial time in my life, and uh, things just didn't work out the way they should have worked out. Uh, and that way, uh, I didn't play football. But like as I said, the passion had already crept in. So I knew that what I did not achieve as a player, maybe, I can go back home and, and, and give the story with, to the young other uh, young Yes, and, and help a young boy, like as wow. I said. Yeah. Thank you so much, Coach Patrick, for uh, sharing your story. That's amazing and powerful. Yeah. Over to you, Pastor B3. What a story, studio audience. Help me, help me, help me appreciate. Woohoo! You know what I love about your story? You get the ones who are not privileged and the privileged and help them meet together. Yeah, and then the people who are in the middle don't know where they belong. <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you, friends, for joining us today for another session of Business Garage. Look, if you've never met Jesus Christ, Lord of your life, it's impossible to have that kind of heart and sustain passion and continue to think outside the box and have big dreams. We want to invite you into a relationship with him today. It's so easy. All you need to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And I'd like to help you do that right now. So wherever you are, why don't you just go ahead, put your hand up wherever you are, just by yourself. But God is right there seeing that commitment. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I give you my heart. I believe you are my Lord and my Savior. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. There is a number on your screen, 0775642449. Call that number, send a message, let us know. We'd like to help you walk the journey moving forward.